next question is question number 21 this is of the same kind as the previous one in this question you have to integrate 10 cube x multiply by secant cube x you can rewrite this integral as secant cube x multiplied by tan square x tan square x multiplied by tan x actually you should had written it as secant square x tan square x multiplied by <coughs> secant x tan x dx and instead of tan square x you may have written it like secant square x minus 1 and rest of the terms have to remain as themselves tan x dx because uh, secant square x plus tan square x is equal to 1 therefore I have replaced tan square x by secant square x minus 1 now you have to put secant x is equal to t so that dt is equal to secant x tan x dx substitute these values back into the integral you might get t raised to the power t raised t square multiplied by t square minus 1 multiplied by dt that is t raised to the power 4 minus t square dt just integrate it using the power rule t raised to the power 5 divided by 5 minus t raised to the power 3 divided by 3 plus a constant of integration put the value secant raised to the power 5x divide by 5 minus secant cube x divide by 3 plus a constant of integration this is the answer let me confirm it from your textbook <coughs> yes this is the answer next question number 20 is of very same kind sorry question number 22 is of the very same kind and you can do it by yourself in this question you have to integrate cot cube x secant 4 sorry cos secant 4 x dx this question is your homework assignment you may have to do it by yourself so actually you can write it like cot cube x cos cosecant square x multiplied by cosecant square x dx and in place of cosecant square x you have to put 
वन प्लस कॉट स्क्वेर एक्स एंड द रेस्ट ऑफ द टर्म्स वुड बी वुड बी रिटर्न एज दम सेल्स कॉट स्क्वेर स्क्वेर एक्स डी एक्स नेक्स्ट यू हैव टू पुट एक्स इज सॉरी टी इज इक्वल टू कॉट एक्स होपफुली you will you would do the next steps by yourself put them back into your integral you will get the answer question 23 is integrate 1 divided by square root 2 x square Plus three x plus four. In such types of question, you have to always make the denominator in the form of a square minus x square, or in the form of x square minus a square, or in the form of x square plus a square. So for this, you have to apply the technique of completing square. in the denominator and according to the technique of completing square there must be no coefficient with x square that is the coefficient of x square must be one only therefore two has to be taken as common between the terms in the square root of the denominator so take it as common you have x square Plus three divided by two, plus four divided by two. That is two. And then take the square root two out of the integral. First, you have to take it out of the square root, and you have to take it out of the integral since it is constant. And we are left with x square plus three divided by two plus two. Now you have to apply the technique of completing square here. A square plus two a b. B is the half of the coefficient of x since. In the previous term, the coefficient of x is three divided by two. Therefore, its half is three divided by four. We have to add the square of three by four, and to counterbalance it, we have to subtract it. That is, we have to subtract nine divided by sixteen. And the last term was a two plus two. In the next step, the first three terms are the whole square of a plus b. That is, they are the whole square of a. That is, x plus three divided by four whole square. Plus, the next two terms, the fi of the final two terms are minus nine by sixteen plus two, which can be simplified to minus nine plus. 32 divided by 16. That is 23 divided by 16 plus 23 by 16. Therefore, if we write in the whole square form, we have square root 23 divided by 4. <coughs> And there is a square root also. Now we can see that this is the form of x square plus a square. from junior classes you have learned that square root of 1 uh, 1 square a square plus x square the integral of 1 divided by square root a square plus x square it is sin hyperbolic inverse x divided by a and this is also given in the table of integrals you have to mention and then apply this formula 
you may get 1 divided by 2 sine hyperbolic inverse x divided by a instead of x we have x plus 3 by 4 so x plus 3 divided by 4 whole divided by a instead of a we have square root 23 divided by 4 plus a constant of integration simplify sine hyperbolic inverse 4x plus 3 divided by 4 and whole is divided by square root 23 divided by 4 4 and 4 they get cancelled and the final answer is i equals to 1 divided by square root 2 sine hyperbolic inverse 4x plus 3 divided by square root 23 plus a constant of integration so this is the answer next question is question number 24 in this question you have to integrate square root a square minus x square so whenever we have a square minus x square we just put x is equal to a sine theta so we will put x is equal to a sine theta that is dx is equal to a cos theta d theta apply these two values back into the original integral you get square root a square minus x square a square has to be written as it is minus x square instead of x you have to square the substitution of x that is a square sine square theta and instead of dx we have a cos theta d theta take a square as common between the terms within the square root and take uh, the a square out of the square root and it becomes a and we have uh, within the square root 1 minus sine square theta multiplied by a cos theta d theta a and a get multiply and they rise to a square which is taken out of the integral since it is constant and we have to deal nothing with the constants within the integrals and 1 minus sine square theta is equal to cos square theta and it's a square get gets cancelled with the square root you have cos theta this cos theta gets multiplied with the next cos theta and it gives rise to cos square theta d theta in the exercise 4.1 i had mentioned you that whenever there is cos square theta and sine square theta alone in the integral then they have to replace with their equivalent double angle identities so we know that cos square theta is equal to 1 plus cos 2 theta divided by 2 that is simply written here and d theta so this equivalent double angle identity of cos square theta has been written here this makes our simple uh, this or this makes our integral more simple so a square divided by 2 now you apply the integration the integral of 1 is theta similarly integral of cos theta is sine theta since there is 2 theta and we have to divide with the uh, derivative of 2 theta that is 2 plus a constant of integration in the next step you have to simply apply the distributive law over this sum a square divided by 2 plus a square divided by 4 sine 2 theta has to be replaced with its equivalent identity that is 2 sine theta cos theta
and you have a square theta divided by 2 plus a square divided by 2 sine theta cos theta plus a constant of integration since you have the value of sine theta and the value of sine theta is equal to x divided by a similarly you also need the value of theta which comes out to be equal to arc sine or sine inverse x divided by a we will substitute these values in our uh, last ex equation a square divided by 2 instead of theta we have sine inverse x divided by a plus a square divided by 2 instead of sine theta we have x divided by a and we have to find the value of cos theta since we know that cos square theta is equal to 1 minus sine square theta by taking square root on both sides we get cos theta is equal to square root of 1 minus sine square theta and since we have seen that sine theta is equal to x divided by a so sine square theta is equal to x square divided by a square A gets cancelled with the a square and you have just a left a square divided by 2 sine inverse x divided by a plus a x divided by 2 simplify the terms within the square root a square minus x square you are applying the LCM method here divide by a square whole square root the square root of a square is just a plus a constant of integration a gets cancelled with this a and your final answer is a square divided by 2 sine inverse x divided by a plus x divided by 2 multiplied by a square minus x square plus a constant of integration next question is question number 25 in this question you have to integrate i equal to integral of 2x plus 3 square root 2x plus 1 we will further deal with such questions in the exercise 4.5 however I will give you a hint that how do we solve such sort of questions the term that is given in the square root has to put equal to t together with its square root that is we have to put t equal to square root 2x plus 1 you have to square it by squaring you get 2x plus 1 on the right hand side and t square on the left hand side therefore the value of x from here is t square minus 1 divided by 2 if you take the differential then you see that you have 1 divided by 2 2t and dt two gets cancelled with the two and you are left with dx is equal to t dt put these values back into the integral you get i equal to two times the value of x the value of x that we have found is t square minus 1 divided by 2 plus 3 
there is also the use of brackets and instead of square root 2x plus 1 we have t and instead of dx we have t dt simplify it 2 gets cancelled with this 2 and you have t square minus 1 plus 3 and t square dt t square plus 2 multiplied by t square dt t raised to the power 4 plus 2t square dt in the next step you have to apply the power rule of the integrals that is t raised to the power 5 divided by 5 plus 2t cube divide by 3 you just have to put the values here the value of t is square root 2x plus 1 whole raised to the power 5 divide by 5 similarly 2 divided by 3 square root of 2x plus 1 whole raised to the power 3 plus a constant of integration that is equivalent to 2x plus 1 since square root it can be written in the power form in the exponent form as 1 by 2 and 1 by 2 gets multiplied with 5 which gives rise to 5 divided by 2 divided by 5 similarly 2 divided by 3 2x plus 1 whole raised to the power 3 divided by 2 plus a constant of integration that might be your answer yes this is the answer let me move immediately to the next question next question is question number twenty six in this question you have to integrate one plus x square whole raised to the power minus 3 divided by 2 and dx it is in the form of 1 plus x square so we have two uh, possibilities that we put x is equal to a sine theta or x is equal to sorry x is equal to a tan theta or x is equal to a sine hyperbolic theta so here I will make use of x is equal to a tan theta so x is equal to a a here is 1 therefore need not to be written x is equal to tan theta only apply the differential you get secant square theta d theta equal to dx I put it back into the integral i equal to 1 plus x square instead of x square you have tan square theta whole raised to the power minus 3 divided by 2 and instead of dx you have secant square theta d theta since 1 plus tan square theta is equal to secant square theta whole raised to the power minus 3 divided by 2 and secant square theta d theta the square gets cancelled with the square root and you have secant square theta divided by secant cube theta d theta this is equivalent to 1 divided by secant theta d theta which is further equivalent to just cos theta 
being equal to sine theta plus a constant of integration since we have x is equal to tan, tan theta that is tan theta is equal to x divided by 1 so we can make a triangle tan theta is equal to x divided by 1 so perpendicular of the right triangle is x and the base is 1 x divided by 1 and the hypotenuse can be found by using the Pythagoras theorem that is studied in the very junior classes and it gives us the value of hypotenuse being equal to square of 1 plus square of x square of 1 plus square of x that is 1 plus x square whole square root so from here we have the value of sine theta equal to perpendicular over hypotenuse that is x divided by square root 1 plus x square plus a constant of integration so that's the answer yes this is the correct one so that's it from our today's lecture the next question is question number 27 in this question you have to integrate i equal to x square divided by square root x square plus 1 dx in this question you can write the numerator you can write the numerator term uh, like that given in the denominator that is you can write it like x square plus 1 and for balancing you had to subtract 1 why it is done because we can write it like x square plus 1 divide by square root <coughs> divide by square root x square plus 1 we have just separated the uh, numerator terms so this was the benefit of adding and subtracting 1 that we get x square plus 1 square root minus integral of 1 divided by square root x square minus 1 so we have separated two integrals that are more simpler than the given integral name the first integral as i1 and the second integral is equal to sine hyperbolic inverse x since uh, just in the previous question I had mentioned you a formula that 1 divided by square root a square minus x square its integral is 1 sorry sine hyperbolic inverse x divided by a and here instead of a we have 1 so integral of 1 divided by 1 minus x square is simply sine hyperbolic inverse x divided by 1 needs not to be written so sine hyperbolic inverse x is the answer now we will solve the integral i1 separately mark this as equation number one and solve the integral i1 i1 is equal to the integral of square root x square plus one since this is the form of a square plus x square therefore we have two choices that we can put x is equal to a tan theta or x is equal to a sine hyperbolic theta since in the previous equation equation number one we have substituted a sine hyperbolic inverse x therefore 
we will put here x is equal to a sine hyperbolic theta and a is 1 dx is equal to cos hyperbolic theta d theta substitute into the uh, integral i1 you would get integral of square root x square plus 1 that is sine hyperbolic square theta plus 1 and instead of dx we have cos hyperbolic theta d theta since we know that cos hyperbolic square theta minus sine hyperbolic square theta is equal to 1 therefore sine hyperbolic square theta plus 1 is cos hyperbolic square theta and its square gets cancelled with the square root and you have cos hyperbolic theta which gets multiplied with the next cos hyperbolic theta and it makes it cos hyperbolic square theta d theta here we will use the double angle identity 1 plus cos hyperbolic 2 theta divided by 2 d theta and you must be able to drive these quantities cos hyperbolic theta when you are taking its square then you you should be familiar to the value of cos hyperbolic theta that is e raised to the power x plus e raised to the power minus x divided by 2 since you are taking its square so this is the case and you should drive this formula by using uh, this definition apply the square in the numerator e raised to the power 2x plus e raised to the power minus 2x uh, plus 2ab 2 a is a raised to the power x b is a raised to e raised to the power minus x and they both cancel each other when they are multiplied and whole is divided by 4 and 4 can be uh, separated from this term and this term and this is equal to 1 divided by 2 cos hyperbolic 2 theta plus 1 by 2 which is equivalent to the required formula what happened here uh, I have just uh, mentioned that cos hyperbolic theta is equal to here it should be x actually there is not theta there is cos hyperbolic square x so cos hyperbolic theta uh, or x cos hyperbolic x is equal to e raised to the power x plus e raised to the power minus x divided by 2 so if you replace x with 2x you have cos hyperbolic 2x is equal to e raised to the power 2x plus e raised to the power minus 2x divided by 2 and this equation has been substituted here so now you apply the integrals you get theta divided by 2 or 1 divided by 2 theta plus similarly 1 divided by 2 cos hyperbolic 2 theta has its integral sine hyperbolic 2 theta divided by 2 plus a constant of integration again 1 divided by 2 theta plus 1 divided by 4 instead of sine hyperbolic 2 theta you should write 2 sine hyperbolic theta cos hyperbolic theta and you can also drive this equation double angle identity 2 gets cancelled with this 4 and you have 1 divided by 2 sine hyperbolic theta cos hyperbolic theta next you have to substitute the values since the given substitution is x is equal to sine hyperbolic theta so cos hyperbolic uh, theta needs to be replaced so 1 divided by 2 theta plus 1 divided by 2 sine hyperbolic theta and cos hyperbolic theta is equal to square root 1 plus sine hyperbolic square theta plus a constant of integration now you have to put the values from x is equal to sine hyperbolic theta we see that theta is equal to sine hyperbolic inverse x so we have 1 divided by 2 sine hyperbolic inverse x 
plus 1 by 2 instead of sine hyperbolic x we have uh, sine hyperbolic theta we have x and in the square root we have 1 plus x square plus the constant of integration so this is the answer of i1 substitute it back into the original integral i and then i is equal to i1 minus sine hyperbolic inverse x so put the value of i1 1 divided by 2 sine hyperbolic inverse x plus 1 divided by 2 x square root 1 plus x square and minus sine hyperbolic inverse x the first term and the last term they just simplify to minus 1 by 2 sine hyperbolic inverse x plus 1 by 2 x square root 1 plus x square plus the constant of integration so hopefully this is your answer let me check it from your textbook yes this is the correct answer now we will move to the next question the next question is a little bit trickier and it is lengthy question number 20 28 in this question you have to integrate 2x plus 4 multiplied by square root 2x square plus 3x plus 1 dx note that what is the derivative of the term within the square root its derivative is 4x plus 3 uh, whereas we have 2x therefore we have to multiply and divide by 2 when you do so you have 4x plus 8 and the rest of the terms are written as themselves Since you need 4x plus 3 because the derivative of the term within the square root is 4x plus 3 so you will write here 4x plus 3 and minus 3 and plus 8 is written as it is and the next term is again written as it is simplify it we have 4x uh, we need 4x plus 3 and minus 3 and plus 5 plus 8 they reduce to plus 5 so now you can apply the distributive law for 4x plus 3 and 5 apply it you get 1 divided by 2 integral of 4x plus 3 this is multiplied with this square root 2x square plus 3x plus 1 dx plus 5 square root of 2x square plus 3x plus 1 whole dx You should write it in the systematic way now you have to apply the uh, distributive law again 1 by 2 integral of 4x plus 3 that is you have to separate the integral just 
2 x square plus 3 x plus 1 similarly plus 5 divided by 2 integral of <coughs> square root 2x square plus 3x plus 1 dx so we have these two integrals in the first integral we can uh, see that we can apply the power rule of the integrals so we will apply it 1 by 2 the power is uh, 1 by 2 so we will add a 1 in the power 2x square plus 3x plus 1 whole power is 3 divided by 2 and whole divided by 3 divided by 2 and plus 5 by 2 the last integral is named as i1 here 2 and 2 get cancelled and you are left with 1 divided by 3 2x square plus 3x plus 1 whole raised to the power 3 by 2 now we have to solve out the integral i1 and i1 is equal to square root 2x square plus 3x plus 1 its integral and mark the previous equation as equation number 1 apply the technique of completing square again you have to take 2 as common and you have to take it out of the integral x square minus sorry plus 3 divided by 2x plus 1 divided by 2 whole square root dx apply the completing square technique a square plus 2 a b a is x and b is the half of the coefficient of x that is 3 divided by 4 plus 3 divided by 4 whole square and you have to also subtract it subtract it you get minus 9 divided by 16 and the last term was 1 divided by 2 square root 2 and in the integral you have square root of the first three terms are the square root of x plus 3 divided by 4 whole square and the last two terms uh, can be simplified to minus 9 by 16 plus 1 by 2 apply the LCM method you have minus 9 plus 8 divided by 16 that is equal to minus 1 divided by 16 so minus 1 divided by 16 is the square of 1 divided by 4 now you can see that that this is the form of x square minus a square where we can put x is equal to a secant theta or we can also put x is equal to a cos hyperbolic theta so i will make the substitution of cos hyperbolic theta x is equal to a cos hyperbolic theta so putting x that is x plus 3 by 4 because x here is x plus 3 by 4 is equal to a cos hyperbolic theta apply the differential the differential of x is dx and the differential of 3 by 4 is 0 because it is constant 1 divided by 4 differential of cos hyperbolic theta is sine hyperbolic theta and a d theta put these values in the previous integral then i1 is equal to square root 2 integral of square root of instead of x plus 3 by 4 we have 1 by 4 square that is 1 by 16 and cos hyperbolic square theta 
and minus 1 by 4 square that is 1 by 16 multiply it by dx and instead of dx we are writing 1 divided by 4 sine hyperbolic theta d theta square root 2 multiplied by take 1 divided by 16 as constant between the terms within the square root then we have and take it out of the square root you get 1 divided by 4 and within the square root you have cos hyperbolic square theta minus 1 that is equal to sine hyperbolic square theta and in the next is 1 divided by 4 sine hyperbolic theta d theta 4 and 4 they get multiply and take them out of the square root sorry out of the integral you have square root 2 divided by 16 integral of square of the sine hyperbolic theta cuts with its square square root and you have sine hyperbolic theta multiply sine hyperbolic theta which is equal to sine hyperbolic square theta d theta and we know that square root 2 divided by 16 we know that sine hyperbolic square theta is equal to cos hyperbolic 2 theta which you should prove by yourselves divide by 1 divide by square root or oh sorry 1 uh, divide by 2 d theta and this is equivalent to square root 2 divide by 32 apply the integral on cos hyperbolic 2 theta and 1 you get sine hyperbolic theta sine hyperbolic 2 theta divided by 2 minus theta plus a constant of integration square root 2 divided by 32 and in the integral you have <coughs> uh, instead of sine hyperbolic 2 theta we will write 2 sine hyperbolic theta cos hyperbolic theta divide by 2 and minus theta plus constant of integration here is the sign of square bracket not the sign of integral so sorry for the mistake and in the next two gets cancelled with oh sorry two gets cancelled with the two and you have to write the values of sine hyperbolic theta and cos hyperbolic theta since x plus 3 by 4 is equal to 1 by 4 cos hyperbolic theta x plus 3 by 4 is equal to 1 by 4 cos hyperbolic theta so this implies that if you multiply both of the sides with 4 you have x sorry 4x plus 3 is equal to cos hyperbolic theta so we will simply replace cos hyperbolic theta with 4x plus 3 So square root 2 divided by 32 multiplied by cos hyperbolic theta is equal to 4x plus 3 multiplied by cos hyperbolic theta which is equal to the square root of cos hyperbolic square theta minus 1 that is 4x plus 3 whole square minus 1 and then there is theta theta can be found from here simply equal to cos hyperbolic inverse 4x plus 3 is equal to theta so this is the value of theta substitute this value here you have cos hyperbolic inverse 4x plus 3 
apply these values you can also uh, simplify it further square root 2 divided by 32 4x plus 3 multiplied by apply the square a square plus 2ab 4 multiply 3 is 12 and 12 multiply 2 is 24 24x plus 9 and minus 1 that is 8 and the next term has to be written as it was in the previous step plus a constant of integration and then you can also take 8 as a common from the first term sorry square root 2 it was a square root 2 divide by 32 multiplied by 4x plus 3 since we have taken square root 8 as common 8 has been taken as, as common and it is taken out of the square root and we have 2x square plus 3x plus 1 minus cos hyperbolic inverse 4x plus 3 plus a constant of integration now you have to apply the distributive law apply the distributive law here you have square root 2 and square root uh, 8 they get multiply and they become square root 16 divide by 32 and 4x plus 3 square root 2x square plus 3x plus 1 and minus square root 2 divided by 32 cause hyperbolic inverse and 4x plus 3 plus constant of integration so this is the value of i1 now we have to substitute this value back to the integral i and the integral i is equal to 1 divided by 3 2x square plus 3x plus 1 3 by 2 plus 5 by 2 i1 so you have to put this value uh, the value of i1 uh, down in equation number 1 so you have i is equal to 2x square plus 3x plus 1 whole raised to the power 3 divided by 2 divided by 3 plus plus 5 by 2 i1 so 5 by 2 i1 i will multiply 5 by 2 with uh, the terms or uh, in the i1 so 5 by 2 multiplied by square root 16 that is 4 here it should be 4 the 4 by 32 and 4x plus 3 multiplied by square root 2x square plus 3x plus 1 and, and again 5 by 2 has to be multiplied with square root 2 divide by 32 and cause hyperbolic inverse 4x plus 3 plus the constant of integration so this would be your answer 2 gets cancelled with the 4 and you have and again 2 gets cancelled with this 32 you have 5 by 16 So this is your answer let me simplify it further 2x square plus 3x plus 1 whole divide by 3 
and uh, the power of the numerator is uh, 3 divided by 2 plus 5 by 16 4x plus 3 multiplied by square root 2x square plus 3x plus 1 and in the last square root 2 and 2 they get cancelled so we have square root 2 in the denominator so 5 divided by 32 square root 2 and cos hyperbolic inverse 4x plus 1 plus constant of integration let me check this answer from your textbook yes this is the answer and this is the correct answer just one mistake is there that is this is not plus this is minus as you can see in the previous term so that's it from our today's lecture